Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah. I'm from Satin Ice. Um, happy Friday and welcome to the Whimsical Rainbow Topper class. Here's a look at what we'll be making today. It's a really colorful, fun fondant topper that's really easy to make. Um, we're going to be going over how to make buttercream with the Satin Ice Buttercream Icing Mix. And then we will also walk you through how to make the topper. Um, I also have Melinda here with me. She's gonna let me know if you guys have any questions throughout the time. And yeah, let's get started. Um, we can go to the overhead camera and I'll go through the supplies that we'll need. So we've got our fondant. Um, I have the 4.4 ounce packs that you can get at your local Michael's shop. We have orange, turquoise, purple, pink, yellow, and bright green. Um, I also have Ziploc bags with me because when I open the fondant, we don't want it to be exposed to air for too long because it can dry out. So as the packs are open, I'm going to seal them in these bags. I have scissors to open up the packs. I have water and a food safe paintbrush to adhere the fondant pieces together. Um, I have a piping bag. This is for when we get to the buttercream. Some cornstarch, this helps the fondant from sticking to the surface and it can help from it sticking to your hands. I have the butter for the buttercream icing mix, measuring spoons, a knife, a cupcake, some water and buttercream icing mix, and also a mixer and a mixing bowl. I will get to the details with the buttercream once we get to that, but I think I'm going to start with the um, fondant topper first. So I'm just going to put the buttercream supplies to the side. Also, this is what the buttercream icing mix package looks like. It comes in a pail. This is also at your local Michael's shop. Okay. So the first thing we're going to start with is our bright green fondant. Also, there is a comment in the chat that has the link to this tutorial on satinice.com if you wanna also follow along through that. I'm going to use scissors to open up my fondant packet. We're only going to need a little tiny bit. Here's what the end result is going to look like. So we're just gonna be making skinny strands of fondant and then twirling the edges. I'm going to cut off just the corner of this bright green fondant that might end up being too much. And to save this for later, I'm going to put it into a Ziploc baggie so that it stays soft. As fondant sits out, it does tend to get dry and it starts to set. So at first fondant will feel a little bit firm and the warmth of your hands and as you knead it, it softens it and it activates the gum in it. And this is what makes it able to be pliable and bendy and you're able to form really fun shapes. So I'm just kneading the bright green fondant and mine's pretty soft. I have warmer hands, so my fondant tends to get soft pretty quick. So I'm just going to roll it into a ball and then I'm going to use my pointer finger and my middle finger and I'm just going to roll back and forth to create a skinny log. And like I said, I probably um, used a little too much, so that's okay though. I'm gonna cut off the excess toward the end. You can probably form your log to be about three inches long. It's probably a good size. So I'm going to cut the excess off. And then whatever extra pieces, you can also put that in your bag with your other fondant. Okay, 
So once you have your log formed, you're going to curl the top edge to the right, and you're just going to make a small swirl. So fold it over and then bend it in and down until it creates a small swirl. Can fold this up closer. We are going to repeat this process with each um, color, but they're going to get smaller as we cascade down the side. And then the other ones on the left side will be folded to the left instead of the right. So the next color we're going to start with is yellow. And you can do this in whatever colors you want. I just thought it would be fun and bright to do rainbow colors. I'm going to take a small portion of yellow out and put the rest in my bag. going to knead the yellow fondant to soften it a little bit. And this log, we want to be the same size as our bright green strand. Okay. So I'm going to roll it into a ball and then form it into a log. So I'm going to roll back and forth with my pointer finger and my middle finger. I find that if you use your whole hand or if you roll it on your hand, you're gonna form tapered edges. And we kind of want this to be uniform throughout. So we wanna aim for about the same thickness as the green strand and the same length. But if it ends up being longer, it's okay. You can cut the ends off at the end. So I think that's about the same thickness. So now with this one, we're going to curl it again and form the same swirl, but we're going to bend it to the left. So it, it's like it's facing outward from the other one. So I'm going to bend it down and then pinch it in and swirl. Now to get these two pieces to stick to each other, I'm going to use a tiny bit of water. It's important not to use too much water when you're working with fondant to adhere the pieces because it can get too sticky and hard to work with. So I'm just brushing water in between the two pieces and then pressing them together lightly so that they start to stick together. And right now you can leave, if the pieces aren't even on the ends, you can leave them like that. At the end, we're gonna do a nice clean cut with all the colors to make sure everything's one length. The next color I have up is blue or turquoise, whichever one you have. I'm using turquoise actually. But I love how bright and colorful the satin ice fondant colors are. So I have a small portion of turquoise. So this strand is going to be a little bit shorter than the green and the yellow. So we'll meet this fondant to get it soft. Roll it into a small ball and then roll it into a skinny log. Like I said, I find it easier to use two fingers to form the log. If you use too many, it kind of this, the log isn't as smooth if you use too many or if you use your whole hand. Okay, so this is about the same thickness and what I'm going to do is swirl this out to the right 
because this is going to be on the same side as the bright green. So I'm going to pinch it and swirl it down. And then this is going to be placed directly underneath the green swirl. And then you can take your water just a little bit and brush it in between where these two pieces are touching and this will adhere it together. If you're finding that your fondant is sticking to you at all or the surface, you can use cornstarch to help that. Okay, so the next color will be orange. So I'm kneading the orange to make it soft. Now I'm going to roll it into a ball and then again, form a skinny log just like the others. If you think you've used too much fondant, that's okay because we're gonna cut off the excess at the end. So we wanna kind of match the thickness of the others. So now this one's going to go to the left of the yellow strand. And since it's going on the side of the yellow, we are going to fold it out toward the left, pinch it in and roll it down a little bit until a small swirl forms. And then we're going to place this right under the yellow swirl and then use our brush to adhere it. Okay. So our last color on the right is going to be purple. So these last colors are gonna be the smallest swirls that we make because they're getting smaller as we cascade down. So I'm going to knead the purple. So I'm going to form the log and this is going to be the shortest of all of them along with the pink, the next color we're gonna use. We want it to get to be the same thickness. So the purple is going to the right side of their turquoise or the blue, and you're going to fold it out to the right, pinch it down and roll it down. So it forms a small swirl and place this right under the blue or the turquoise. Now I'm going to use a light amount of water to adhere these pieces together. OK. 
Okay, so the last color we're going to use is pink. Like I said earlier, you can do the same design with other colors. You can also just do a classic style rainbow as well. So I'm going to need the pink fondant. Roll it into a ball and then form a log. I'm using two fingers and I'm rolling up and down, not too with not with too much pressure because we don't want to flatten the fondant. I'm aiming to get the same thickness as the others. Okay. So this is going to go to the left of the orange, and we're going to bend it to the left. Pinch it down and roll down to form a small swirl. Place it directly underneath the orange, press it together, and then use some water to adhere the pieces together. Okay, so this rainbow is finished. It's going to take quite some time to dry and set up. So if you were doing a bunch of these, you can make them all at once and then allow them to set um, and sit out in the air in the open. That will help it to dry. At the end, you'll be able to pick it up like this and you'll be able to place it in your cupcake, which I will show you later after we have the buttercream made. Um, so to get the edges all the same length, just take your knife or a pizza cutter and cut down and pull away and then you have a clean edge. I find that putting my pieces on a piece of paper or a parchment paper helps them dry better because if it's on a smooth surface or a soft surface, it um, will stay softer. So I'm gonna carefully pick this up and just transfer it over to the side. And if your pieces end up separating when you pick it up to move it, you can always just re-adhere them with water. Okay, so next we're going to start making the buttercream. So I'm going to make buttercream with the satinized buttercream icing mix. This can be found at your local Michaels store. All you have to do is add butter and water. And this stuff is amazing. It tastes great and it's not messy at all. Normally when you make buttercream, you have messy powder, uh, powdered sugar flying everywhere. This is actually a dough base. I'll show you what it looks like it's inside of this blue bag. If you look at it at first, it almost resembles fondant, but it's softer and it smells so good. Okay, so I already have my buttercream icing mix measured out. You can either use a food scale or I actually used a cup. So we have different recipes. We have our recommended recipe, which works for crumb coating, filling, covering cakes, piping borders, piping flowers. It's the perfect consistency for almost anything. Um, and this will use one pound of buttercream icing mix or two cups. And then four tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of water. Butter can be used either salted or unsalted. I prefer to use salted because it just helps tone down the sweetness if you don't like something too sweet. Um, the liquid, we're using water. You can feel free to use milk. Um, or you can use dairy-free milk such as coconut milk or almond milk, whatever you prefer. And then 
here is what the buttercream icing mix looks in this bowl. I already have my pound of buttercream icing mix measured out. And then I also have the four tablespoons of butter, which is half a stick. And I have my mixing bowl. So to begin, we're going to put the icing mix in the bowl with the butter. I have a spatula here to help transfer that. And then you can put the butter in. And I'm going to use an electric mixer to combine this. You can either use a hand mixer or a stand mixer, whatever you have on hand. So I'm going to just start on low speed till it incorporates a little bit, maybe go up to medium. And then I'll stop when we add the water. Okay, I'm just going to stop this for a second so I can scrape the sides. It's important to scrape the sides as you work because you wanna make sure the icing mix and the butter incorporate smoothly. So I'm just going to scrape the sides and kind of scrape the bottom and fold it over. I mean, you can see how fast this buttercream comes together. Normally, if you're working with powdered sugar, making homemade buttercream, you kind of have to do it in different steps because the powdered sugar will fly everywhere. And it already looks pretty smooth. This takes about just three minutes to make. So I'm going to mix it a little bit more and then I'll add the water. Okay, so now it's time to add the water. For this consistency that we're doing, I'm going to use one tablespoon. So I have some water here in a bowl. I'm going to measure out one tablespoon and place it in there. And then we'll give it one final mix. Oh, uh, we added one tablespoon of water. Okay, so our buttercream is done just like that. Um, so I'll just go over the different consistencies you can get with this buttercream one more time. So right now we just made the recommended recipe. This is great for crumb coating, filling, um, frosting a full cake, doing borders or piping flowers or piping swirls on top of a cupcake. Um, so we used one pound of icing mix, four tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of water. You can use milk instead. You can use half and half or cream if you want a creamier consistency. And this buttercream is great because it colors really well. Um, as you can see, it has a very bright white color because you're using a small amount of butter. So you're not really getting that yellow pigment from the butter. Um, it has a subtle vanilla flavor. So you can really add any other flavorings you want, whether it's uh, chocolate, coconut, lemon, um, 
you could, there's a lot of fun recipes on satinice.com, such as chocolate, peanut butter. I think we have an Irish cream, really, really delicious. So I'm going to give it one final stir just to smoothen it out a little bit. Holding it back and forth and kind of pressing down helps get the air bubbles out or like moving it side to side. The more you whip the buttercream, the more air bubbles you'll have. But sometimes people want a fluffy buttercream. And if you do want a fluffy buttercream, just whip it a little bit more because this will get very fluffy. So I'm just um, going over it with my spatula back and forth to get rid of any air bubbles. And once you make this buttercream, if you want, you can keep it in the fridge for probably about a week. And then you can also put it in the freezer as well. And it thaws great. But the good thing about this icing mix is that you can use as much as you need um, when you make so you're not contaminating it. You're just making as you go. And then this is shelf stable by itself, the mix. So it works out really well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pipe on the cupcake these little dollops of buttercream kind of to make it look like little clouds. So I'm just going to use a piping bag. No piping tip is necessary. Um, if you wanted to use a piping tip, you could, but we're not getting like a star tip or like any lines. We just kind of want fun airy dollops for this one. So I have a piping bag. I got some frosting on it, so I'm just wiping it off. So when I add buttercream to a piping bag, I like to fold the edges down. And I kind of put my hand underneath the pocket that creates when you fold the edges down of the piping bag. This helps me have more control when I'm putting the buttercream in. I'm using my other hand to really widen the edges. And then always use a small amount at a time when you're filling up piping bag. This way you can push it down. If you add too much at a time, it can get really messy and hard to control. So I have mine going all the way down and I'm going to scrape with my fingers. Put some more in. If you fill it too much, it will be hard for you to squeeze out the buttercream. Um, you can pinch down on the sides and you can move your buttercream down. Another way is you can use a bench scraper. This is like a nice way to keep it clean. You can press down and this pushes the buttercream all the way down. So the reason why it's not going all the way down to the edge yet is because I haven't cut the tip. So I'm kind of just eyeballing where I'm going to cut the tip of the piping bag. This, the closest you go to the tip, the smaller the hole will be. Um, I kind of just want a medium size. So we'll probably just go about an inch, an inch and a half up from the tip of the bag. And cut down and then when you squeeze, the buttercream will flow down. Okay. So I have a vanilla cupcake here and I'm going to place my hand at the top of where the buttercream sits and I'm going to lightly squeeze and just form little dollops. When you don't want the icing to come out anymore, Stop squeezing and lightly lift up and you'll have little peaks like this. And then you can just continue to go around the whole cupcake and then we can layer on top to create a cloud effect. If you don't want them to have peaks, you can lightly lift up from your squeeze and kind of like, 
uh, flick your wrist a little bit to help it so it's a flatter edge. But I kind of like the peak, so I'm gonna continue with that. So I'm just layering them now above, around and on top of the others. This will create a higher um, pipe as well. Okay, so I like how my buttercream looks right now. And then I have a topper that I made yesterday. So it's already dry, so I'm able to pick it up. And now I can place it down on top of the cupcake. Um, if you were making a bigger topper of this and you had wider logs, you can stick um, toothpicks at the edges of each one inside carefully so that you can easily place it down into a cake or on top of a cupcake, whatever you like. Um, this is a small enough one, so I don't really need the toothpicks and I can just place it directly down onto it and then you have your finished cupcake. And then I can show you guys another variation of a rainbow because we still have more time, unless you guys have any questions. But these are a lot of fun to make. Um, they're super colorful and fun. Leave this here. Okay, if you don't have a piping bag, you can use a Ziploc bag. I'll show you actually, I'll show you with this. I have a Ziploc bag right here. So what I would do is I would put some buttercream into it. And you wanna aim for the corner of the bag and be careful not to overfill it. And I'm just going to put some here and you wanna squeeze it so that it goes down to the corner of the bag like this, and then cut a small portion off the corner of the bag. And I will show you on this bench scraper so I can put it back in the bowl. And then you're just gonna squeeze, just like if you were using a typing bag, you'll get the same effect. The reason it works with this is because we're not using a piping tip. It might be a little harder if you were using a piping tip and a plastic bag, but you get the same effect. And if you don't have a plastic bag or a piping tip, feel free to just um, smooth the frosting on with a spatula or a knife. And then you can also give it a cool effect as well. So if I was just smoothing this, I can smooth it and then kind of just create like little swirls or give it texture. Like that. So it's really versatile. You don't have to use a piping bag either. So I will show you guys another variation of a rainbow. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a classic rainbow. I'm going to show you how to make a classic rainbow. So we'll use the same colors. I'm going to go in the order of pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple. So first we want to, when we're making a classic rainbow, I'm using a cup for reference because we're going to bend the pieces around to form the half circle shape. You want to start with your last color first. So first we're going to start with the purple. We're going to be using the same exact technique as we used for the first topper. I'm going to knead the fondant and get it soft. If you had a circle cutter, you can use that too to form your um, rainbow. Actually, I think I know how to use I'm using a cup right now, but I actually have a circle cutter. I'm gonna do a small rainbow. Okay. I'm using this small circle cutter as my guide for my rainbow. I think that cup would have made one too big. So I'm just kneading the fondant to make it soft and then forming a ball and then 
forming a log. So again, we're using the same exact technique as the other rainbow. We're just creating a different shape with it. Use too much vomit. So I'm taking two fingers and I'm rolling back and forth to create a skinny log. It doesn't matter how long you have to roll it until you get the thickness that you like because you're going to cut the edges off anyway. So once you get to a thickness that you like, you're going to take your circle template, whether it's a cup or a circle cutter, and you're going to wrap the first color around to create a half circle shape. And you're going to leave this there just like this. So it holds its shape and it stays in place. And we're starting with our last color of the rainbow first. So we're working from the inside out. So I started with purple. My next color I'm going to use is turquoise. So there's a lot of variations of rainbows that you can make with these colors. These are just two right now. You can also marble these colors together to create a rainbow effect and cut out different shapes. So I'm kneading the turquoise to make it soft, rolling it into a ball and then forming another log. About the same thickness as the purple. Make sure your hands are clean as you are working. Um, I have a wet cloth by me because the pigment from the color you were working with before might rub off onto your hands if you have warmer hands. And then that can rub off onto the next color you're using. So make sure your hands stay clean. So I'm forming another log about the same thickness as the purple. Just wanna see if I have enough that will wrap around. As we go to the, toward the outside of the rainbow and um, toward the top, you're going to need more as you get wider. So now we're going to wrap this next color around the top of the previous color. So my previous color is purple. So we're wrapping the turquoise around the purple, still keeping your round template there, not moving that. This is gonna keep the half circle shape. I'm going to use the smallest amount of water to help um, adhere these two together. So where they touch, just use your brush and go along the crease and then press them together. The next color I'm going to do is bright green. Roll it into a ball and form a log about the same thickness as your other colors. Again, as we move up the colors of the rainbow, we are going to need longer logs because it's going, um, it's going to be take up more space. I'm using two fingers to lightly form a log, rolling back and forth. Okay. 
once you have the length, cut off the excess and wrap it around the previous color. It's okay if you have excess that's uneven on the edges, we're going to make a clean cut at the end when we have all of our colors together. So again, I'm going to brush a light amount of water to adhere the green to the blue and the creases. Next color is yellow. We're going to roll this into a log that's slightly longer than the green, the same thickness. I like to wrap it around the previous color as I'm rolling just to make sure I didn't go too long or and to make sure that my thickness is correct. I'm gonna make it a little thinner. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the yellow around the green. Use a small amount of water to adhere the pieces together. Next color is orange. We're using slightly a larger amount of fondant each way, each time we do the next color because it has more um, length to cover. So I'm just kneading this. If you notice your hands are getting sticky like mine, you can use some cornstarch. Be careful not to use too much because that can dry out the fondant. You can also dust some on your surface this way when you're rolling, it doesn't stick to your hands either. So as you have to create longer logs, it does get a little trickier to create one that's smooth and not have ridges in it. So that's why I still recommend using two fingers to roll back and forth. Um, light pressure, you don't wanna flatten the log and just kind of move down the log as you go back and forth. And then if you want it thinner, you can start back up at the top again and move down as you roll back and forth. This will create a smooth, uniform log.
So I have the length and the thickness that I want. So I'm going to wrap the orange around the yellow and then use a small amount of water to adhere these two pieces together. Okay, so for the last color, I'm using pink. You're going to want to use more of the pink than you did for the orange because you have more surface to cover as you go around. So we're forming our last log. You can also use two hands at a time. Just make sure you're still using two fingers on each side. I just need to make this side a little bit thinner. So now wrap your last color around the previous color. Make sure it's smooth and then adhere with a little bit of water. Okay, so now that you have all of your colors to form the rainbow, this is the time where you can cut the excess off to create a uniform edge. So I'm just taking my knife and I'm going to find where the shortest piece is because that's going to be where you wanna cut this way, they're all even. So I'm gonna cut it around right there press directly down and then dragging away. And then you'll wanna let this sit around the same amount of time as your other toppers this way. The pieces will um, kind of meld together. You can remove the circle template at this time since they are all formed. And then you can let this sit until it dries and then you can place it just on top of the cupcake just like we did the other ones or you can make this even bigger and put it on top of the cake if you want. You can either place this upright on top of buttercream or you can even um, place it flat on top of other fondant or buttercream if you want to. I can't pick this up because it's not dry yet and I don't have a dry one. So I'm gonna leave that there. And then here's the other ones we made. You can use whatever colors you like. I just figured these bright colors were fun and happy. So thank you guys for joining. Um, you guys can go to your local Michael's store and pick up satinized fondant. Um, as well as the buttercream icing mix. Um, be sure to share what you guys have created. If you guys followed along today, post on Instagram or Facebook and tag Michaels or 
um, sat and ice. Um, yeah, so we look forward to seeing what you created and thank you for joining me.